The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion advised. Hey everybody, welcome to the Be Kind Rewind podcast. I am the Big Llama from the Big Llama Show on YouTube. Uh, if you know me from my channel, uh, I do first time movie reactions on my YouTube channel. I have a Sunday night live stream and podcast that we do every single Sunday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But tonight is the Be Kind Rewind podcast. We are going to be talking about none other than the 1992 classic Aladdin. Yes, the animated feature, the animated classic, not the new Will Smith one. We're talking about the animated classic. Now, I have I need I need help. I said, I, you know, when I do this podcast, I want people who love movies as much as I do or love at least the movie we're talking about as much as I do. And none other than Island Boy Manny will be joining us today. Welcome to the Be Kind Rewind podcast, my friend. Station, brother. Thank you so <laughs> much for having me, dude. I'm, I'm excited. I don't get to talk about like animated or kids movies. I'm always talking about some some like dopey comedy or or some horror film. I th this is my this is this is my happy place, man. I watch no, cartoons I way too much for a forty <laughs> for a forty year old man. I'm just saying. Well, you know, I used to use the excuse that I, I I have kids so that I can watch these. But what I've realized is I'm showing my age because a lot of these movies came out in the 90s when I was a, a, a teenager of sorts. And um, and I've probably seen them an unhealthy amount of times. So, <laughs> um, so I, I can't, I, you know, anything 2003 and above, I can use my kids as an excuse. But Prior to 2003, I was all over, man. I love, I love animation, man. I love Disney animation too. So, dude, my kids, my kids are six and two, and like to be watch this on Disney Plus this week, I had to try to convince my six year old to sit down. I'm like, watch this movie with Daddy. I used to like it when I was a little boy. She's like, oh. all right, <laughs> but she seemed to enjoy it. At least she looked up from her tablet way more than she usually does. So I'm like, oh, well, that's good. And that's the other thing too, is like the, and it's weird. It's, it's weird because the, the, the stuff that I do is really not conducive to the way that I watch movies. <laughs> I watch movies in silence and I absorb them and I listen and I, you know, I'm focused, but when I do my, my, uh, my first time reactions, I'm talking all throughout, I'm asking questions. So I've, I become the complete opposite of my normal movie watching self. But I've, I realized that's how people watch movies nowadays. Like, you know, kids and, and wives and like, if my wife sits with me to watch a movie, I think she sees 25% of the movie. And if, yeah, <laughs> if that, and, and it's never, it, it's always background noise. Too. It's like, everyone's like, oh yeah, I know. I watched that while I was doing the dishes, cooking dinner and trimming a bonsai tree. Like, at what point did you actually see any of the cinematography? At what point right. did you get any mood or tension? You just you just heard, especially you watch a horror movie. All you heard was like the sound rack it up and then like a cat jump out of nowhere because that's like what every jump scare ends up being. <laughs> horrible. So horrible. Yeah, it's usually a cat, usually a cat or that, that's uh, that's the cliche they use, as they say. Right. Um, all right. So Aladdin. So, you know. We, you know, you, you and I were, were texting a little bit back and forth. We, we had our choice of maybe the Lion King or Aladdin, both strong, right? Lion King is very strong. Absolutely. Um, but we landed on Aladdin. You know, usually I let the guests pick the, the movie, you know, that we're doing. Um, so just kind of in, in, in brief, like what, why Aladdin? Why do you like Aladdin? Why is this uh, one of your favorites? All right. So I'm going to take you way back. 19, what, 1990. It was 90, 90 is it 92? 92 is when it came 92, out. 92, yeah. Sure. All right, so 1992. I am I am in the first grade, and this is one of those movies I remember going to the theater to see. This and Super Mario Brothers are two films that I, I, I have very distinct memories of watching at a very young age. I, and my Uncle Gerald was one of those uncles that had, uh, he had a CD player in his minivan, that like no 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 one else I knew had a CD player and he had all these soundtracks, bro. So we were constantly oh, yeah. listening to these songs and singing these songs, and it just the it there's a there's something that is so much deeper than nostalgia when you watch these things because it's not just the remembrance of the movie; it's the remembrance of the time of your life. And 
I think the Disney Renaissance and being a kid back then, we grew up with it. This is our childhood. We're immersed in it, whether it's Disney Afternoon or or Disney VHS films or or Disney on on the screen. It's such a huge part of our lives. It's it's crazy. It's like a family member. I love it. Yeah. No. I, I mean, you said. I mean, listen. We are so lucky, you and I, and anybody around our age, <laughs> um, that we went through the Disney Renaissance. Like we we lived through as a kid the the you know what they called the Disney Renaissance, the uh, Beauty and the Beast, uh, Little Mermaid, Lion King, Aladdin. I mean, the list goes on and on. They were top notch. Uh, and then we we got to live through the MCU, and you know we're living through that now. So like we've gone through like golden ages of 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 movies and animation and fun. And so I, I like the way you put it that way because it's the same for me. It's it was for me is an escape. Movies were always an escape. And I remember seeing Aladdin in the theater. The reason I saw a lot of movies in the '90s is that my cousin worked in a movie theater, and that's that's how my mom you know, on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday, you know, to trying to get rid of me. She's like, Hey, go, go hang out with your cousin. So I go to the theater all the time, every weekend. And I'd watch, it was a fourplex. So if there was four, whatever four movies were playing, I watched them all. Um, and, and needless to say, I watch movies I probably shouldn't be watching, uh, <laughs> at a young age. Um, but I can remember like seeing Aladdin in the theaters and then as as a kid, a 13, 14 year old kid, I bought the I bought the soundtrack. Um and I loved the soundtrack and I would sing it in my car and I'd sing it in my house. Never around the boys though. Never around the, the fellas, you know. It's, it's not, not the manly thing to do. <laughs> there became there became a time. I want to say ninety six. So at that point, my Latin phase had already gone through. But there was a point around ninety six where dude, I'm singing the heck out of anything backstreet boys. But it ain't nobody ever hear me sing Bash You. I I you would like like honestly, like I'm a I'm a Ray Love fan, but I ain't that big a Ray Love fan. I sang I sang every Ray Love song <laughs> under the sun before I sang a single backstreet boy. I get home and all of a sudden it's like as long as you love me. You know what I mean? Like it was <laughs> it was it was, you know, but you had to be a definition of a hustler back in those days, though. Yeah. Around the yeah. And, and and that was the thing. Like I I I in high school I played football. Um, you know, I was with the, the athletes and, you know, in the locker room, I wouldn't dream of putting on, you know, the Aladdin soundtrack or the Lion King sound or anything. Uh, it was, you know, Tupac and Biggie and all this stuff was playing and it was fun, but man, I would, I would, you know, I would love to hear, uh, you know, <laughs> the Lion King entrance or, or a friend like me and, you know, from Aladdin. Um, but you know, listen, it, it, it was just a weird time, but I remember it so fondly and I still love the movie um, that, you know, I bought it in every, every media that I can find. So I have, a, I had the VHS copy. I have this, this DVD, the platinum edition, yep. right. When it's they were re-releasing, um, when we were re-releasing, I was like, Oh, I have to have this. So I went and I bought it. I stood in line, got it at the store. Um, I do want to call out somebody though. Somebody who I'm going to use first name only Chris, if you're listening. Chris, you stole my Aladdin CD and I hate you for it because I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> oh. He bought, he borrowed it. He borrowed it. He's like, Hey, can I borrow it? Get a football friend of mine. And Chris, you know who you are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hope he's, listening. Dude. Dude. He, he's like, oh, As... let me borrow you. Let me borrow your Aladdin CD. And I'm like, all right, no problem, man. Sure. Never got it back. Never got it back, man. Dude, and my, I, I've my... been bitter ever since. <laughs> my problem with my CDs back in the day was we always had we had them them folders full of CDs had the thing up on the visor had little can little things of CDs with little wallet or you know little inserts in them and I don't know I never knew where I put anything so if I'm at a if we're at a stop slide I'm a stoplight I'm digging through like 17 things people are honking fingers are being thrown up always the peace sign Kyrie if you're watching but fingers are being thrown up it was a it was a crazy time in my life it was a crazy time of <laughs> oh man so so i again i remember it being i remember the the movie being just some, you know something um next level like they had animation computer animations were were fresh and new i think beauty and the beast used it on their backgrounds aladdin used it for their flight sequences with the with the carpet um and it's mind-blowing to see it in the theater 
and see animation look, I wouldn't say it was lifelike at the time, it wasn't real, but at that time, it was the next phase of what was, you know, uh, what was amazing, right, in theater. And so I just, I like, I, 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 first of all, the story is good. I enjoyed the story, um, loved the characters, but I just was like, every time I watch it, I'm transported. And it, which is a weird feeling for an animated movie, but I don't know if you get the, the same feeling, but absolutely. Absolutely. It's it, the, what they're able to do in this film with simple, with things that look really simple. Like if you're really trying to be a movie critic, you're going to see them, obviously, you know, like when he goes up to the, when he goes up to the lamp and they have that really bright light shining on his head. Like you could see, okay, that's a, that's a very specific trick, but in the theater, yeah. it just heightened that. Cause you didn't see, you very rarely saw that level of light interaction and contrast in an animated film. You know what I mean? It, it, it made it, it gave it this dynamic, this dynamic that you didn't, you didn't usually see. I will say watching it on Disney plus the flight sequences with the really great CGI, you can totally tell he's rotoscoped in. Like, like he, yeah, he, yeah. He, looks, he looks like he's not part of the action, but back in the day watching that in on, you know, on 24 frames a second or whatever, it, and watching it, watching it unfold on, on screen when it turned into a, a window screensaver when he goes down the wall and yeah. into the <laughs> lava, you didn't catch any of that. You were just, it was, it's such an exhilarating sequence, and it's paced so well that if you cannot have your your cynical like I've seen this a million times because it's twenty twenty two goggles on, that is yeah. a, such an amazing sequence. Yeah, no, and, and that's the thing is like. A lot of times reactors and, and other people who are on YouTube now will constantly be like, oh, the CGI, oh, the CGI. And I'm like, you have to remember what the time frame was. <laughs> you know, yeah. this was hand-drawn animation still. It wasn't computer rendered. It wasn't, you know, computer graphics. It was hand-drawn over overlays, backgrounds, and then they, they had this computer graphic background. Um, so, yeah, you just, you know... I, you know, you can nitpick. You can nitpick anything. I think anything can be nitpicked. But like a movie like this is just like I said, it, it's classic. It's timeless. Um, the characters are memorable. Like the voices, like you hear the you hear the distinct voices of each character, and you you can visualize the character, and that's ingrained in the brain now. You know, like um, some so there's still some that that you know now. Like if you hear uh, Robert Downey Jr., you're like you're like that's Iron Man. Like yep. you know. Like there's there's just certain actors or certain voice actors that you hear and you go like Optimus Prime like the guy I forgot the guy's name but Peter Cullen he, yeah. he, he he's in oh yeah Peter Cullen he's been in every cartoon you can think of but you hear him say roll out it, like one time and you're just like oh that's the guy that's the guy <laughs> that's yeah. Optimus right so yeah. it's the same thing here like you hear these you know hear Jafar you hear Yago you hear all these guys. And you got you instantly can think of the character. So, you know. Oh yeah. Well, what's what's cool about the way that they they there's no stunt casting back in these days, right? These are like the best actors for the job, right? When they 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 mm -hmm. watch Steve, they watch Full House, and they were like, Steve is my Aladdin, right? So they pulled him, yeah. and he yeah. does such an amazing job. And that's why a lot of these voice actors, him, Will Fradel, uh, 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 Christine Larkin, all these these actors have gone on to have these really long illustrious voice acting careers beyond this. But like there became a time in Hollywood where they were just hiring celebrities. Like that was, that was, it was, who oh is the God. celebrity for this? And back in the Disney Renaissance days, back in these days, and I don't want to sound like I'm telling kids to get off my lawn, but you really should <laughs> because it's slippery and I'm my, my homeowner's insurance don't cover nothing. <laughs> but <laughs> the, uh, the, you know, they, they they cast Broadway singers who could sing and actually sounded like people, not a bunch of auto-tune. I, I got love for Will Smith, but no auto-tune, mm -hmm. right? I mean, like, like it's so, this is, this the way that they cast and the way that these characters fit and the care that was put into that and how to make it all work seamlessly, so, so darn, so darn good. And, it, and uh, the only stunt casting in this, Robin Williams, is the only person that should be stunt cast as that genie because yeah, of course of, when Dan Castellaneta did it and Return of Jafar, oof. But yeah, Robin yeah. Williams absolutely killed it. 
You know what? A funny thing, and I I, I was doing some reading uh, leading up to today. Um, Robert Williams did not want to be part of the marketing campaign. He said he agreed to do the movie, but he says I do not want to be prominently featured in the ads for the movie. And you you pretty much know there's a genie, but you, you, he's not like at least not until like the the movie's been out on the run for a while, and, and you know Robin Williams is a hit, right? But leading up to it. You know, Robin Williams was known to be in the movie, but back then we didn't care. Like kids, we, you know, now it's like, oh, who's the famous actor who's going to be in this, you know, Boss Baby movie? <laughs> you know? Yeah. But um, but you're right though. The, the um, they took Broadway talent, they took good voice talent, they took people who fit what the what the vision was that they had. Um, I had seen a documentary, or or was it a YouTube video? a YouTube video that was a documentary of something. Okay, there you go. Um, of how the, the Little Mermaid, right? We're not talking about her, but I'm just saying how they were so, like almost borderline mean, but she was a Broadway actress just belting out the song. And they were like, no, bring it down. No, talk this way. No, do it this way. And it was just this, this like, they knew what they were looking for in the voice. And so, again, that's why... You know, I think this is. Uh, I'm, I'm looking it up right here, just just I want to make sure I don't get their names wrong because they're they're the goats. You know, Mencken, um, Ashman, how Ashman, Tim Rice. You know, yep. you know, the, all yeah. These guys were they made like six in a row that were like knockouts. Like they, <laughs> uh, dude, and they're they're and what's crazy about that that team is the Disney stuff is iconic. But like Little Shop of Horrors, that vinyl, I think I wore a hole in that record when I was a kid. And that has Howard Ashman, too. You know what I mean? Like, yep. these were guys yep. that understood how to take music and incorporate it into a story seamlessly so that there is no film without the music. And the music never detracts from the film because it blends seamlessly and progresses the plot. You know what I mean? Disney does a lot of musicals that is. I don't know if, if you ever have to watch Zombies. Or, or or the Descendants or any of the Disney Channel ones. But the way that they write musicals now is they write songs and then the movie just has to play around the song because the song is right. simply a music video. That's not the way they did it here. This is so seamlessly integrated into the film. You can't have one without the other. As we've seen in the live action remakes when they've cut these songs out, it doesn't oh, work. Oh, man. And, and I was talking to, to somebody about that the other day. I was like, I think it was The Lion King. Um, I think it was on the Sunday Night Live stream that we did. I, w I was just like, I was pissed because I, I went to see the Lion King live action and uh, Be Prepared is one of my favorite songs mm -hmm. and I Just Can't Wait to Be King. Two songs that I, I are like the movie for me and neither one of them showed up in that movie and I'm like, what the hell is this? Why, why am I listening to this? <laughs> like, well, why am I watching this? Um, and, and I made the point like, look, if you're not going to change the story, it's going to be a beat for beat remake just in live action. Then stick with the with with what we know. Like, give me what I yeah. want. <laughs> yeah. Don't just because the voice actor can't do that song doesn't mean that I shouldn't get it right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Don't nostalgia bait me and then remove my nostalgia. That's like that's like somebody serving me like like freaking sugar free cake or something. Don't don't do that. <laughs> don't bait and switch me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. So let's do this. Let's um. What I like to do is watch the trailer. And uh, let's see if the let's see if the trailer is here. All right, let's watch the trailer real quick. Now, most of this trailer is not going to make it to the YouTube cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it in there, and if it doesn't make it, then I I'll avoid it out. But <laughs> it'll make the podcast for sure. So um, let's just watch the trailer. Let's get our nostalgia on, and let's uh, get into the story of Aladdin real quick. I got the Cave of Wonders. I think there's something written here. I mean, Ten thousand years <laughs> will give you such a crick in the neck. Say the magic word. Genie, I wish for you to make me a prince. He has the lamp. Do you trust me? A whole new world. Don't you dare close your eyes. 
Oh yeah, this is not making it too better. How long were they on that carpet, bro? They go through like 17 countries. <laughs> That's a fast carpet for sure. <laughs> Keep your hands and arms inside the carpet. We out of here. Aladdin Diamond Edition. Oh, dude. You know, the, yeah. the, that that hoax for the Black Diamonds, those went for high, bro. They, I still got, like, a Goodwill by the house that's got one in the glass case, like, $750. Like, I guess <laughs> The Diamond something. Editions and everything? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no. I, I, used to, I used to have a bunch of the VHS tapes. And, and this is why I know I'm not a good collector. I get rid of things. Like, I, I want other people to enjoy things. Even though... My Disney VHS collection probably could have netted a pretty penny <laughs> if I kept it. Um, but I always give it to friends and family or I give it away at uh, Goodwill or something. So um, I feel like like I did that with The Godfather. I've had every, almost every edition of it and I just kept getting rid of it. And so it's a dumb thing. It's a dumb thing. It's uh, not, not using my, my big man brain here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad at phys- I'm just bad at physical media, bro. Like, like in comic books, even like they they sit on the shelf until they've been read, and then unless it's like a gift or something I got from from the creator, they get packaged up and then they get put on short boxes and they either get sold or sent out in AOKs. Like they don't. Uh, I, I'm horrible yeah. at physical, so I get mad. Like we just did the Godfather on Pop Culture Philosophers. I couldn't find it to to stream without having to purchase it. And I was oh. mad, dude. I was like, seriously, seriously, I gotta buy because because then I gotta tell my wife, like, why'd you why'd you spend $33 on this? You know, like, you probably <laughs> went to Walmart and got it for I know, but then I would have to get the disc and can get scratched. <laughs> it's a whole to do. But yeah, so I'm bad when, with physical media. I think I'm like one yeah. of the few few in our crew that like I don't, I don't know <laughs> nothing. I don't know nothing. One day they can take that digital license from me, I'm gonna have nothing. Oh have my nothing. god. And that's my, my wife wonders why, because now now I'm I'm buying um, Disney Blu-rays and Disney UHDs when they come out, um, little by little. But I'm not re, you know redoing the whole. So yeah, I, Aladdin is still here because I don't have the new version of it. So I still have it, but when I get the new version, I'll probably get rid of this or I'll probably sell this one. Now that I know it's worth something or it might be worth something, um, but but watching the so watching the trailer. Um, brings back all those memories of of how the movie starts and it starts off with uh robin williams who was the 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 street merchant right at the beginning selling you the uh combination hookah and coffee maker also makes <laughs> julian fries <laughs> will not break it broke oh my god i could say the entire <laughs> movie <laughs> and it's <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> Um, see, and that's what I say. Little things like that. Um, like I said, I watched this. I, I recently, uh, probably a day or two ago, watched it and sat down. And, and um, again, as as a grown man um, with nice surround sound now, right, and and things that that work, um, I had that bad boy on like fifty. I had it cranked up, and I had the bass knocking. I had like you know when friend like me came on all the way up. Um, uh, Prince Ali is one of my favorites because there's like, like, and this is the only thing I remember moments, right? Like there's a moment in that Prince Ali song where he busts in right um, yep. to the palace room and you hear the bass of the, the elephants thumping the ground along with the song. Yep. And I remember, I just can like remember crystal clear in the theater, like how that felt. And then I recreated it. I recreated it here in my house. I cranked up the 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 bass, cranked up the song, and I listened. And there it was. It was right there in glorious Atmos. Right? It was like boom and boom. And I was like, I felt like a kid again, man. I felt like a kid again. And that's I think that's why I like animated movies. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if you get the same feeling. I'm, I'm a movie nerd, so oh, when I talk oh, like this, I'm I feel like I'm the only one. But I, I know there's others <laughs> like me. Oh, dude. <laughs> no, I. Now I I didn't have I did not have the any surround sound going I watched it with the character but I was I was acting every dang scene at first she was all impressed she looked at me she's like and I was like I was like what she's like how do you know what they're gonna say and I was like oh I've I've seen this before and she goes you know she seemed impressed and then about ten minutes in it was like <laughs> you need to stop doing that daddy. 
Yeah, stop doing well, that. And you know, you know, your falsetto can't carry you through any of Jasmine's parts of a whole new world. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. No, it's no. Important. I I stopped trying. I st- that I stopped <laughs> trying because it was painful to listen to, and I can only imagine what my family was thinking. Because so in car rides, long car rides, mm-hmm. um, they'll put on their AirPods and they'll put on their whatever, and I will have the Disney tunes or whatever, whatever you know keeps me going. Uh, and I'll have the Disney princesses playing, and I'll just be singing my my songs. Look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Right, and all of a sudden it's like, wait a second, <laughs> like I sound horrific. Like I can hear myself. <laughs> oh, so yeah, I, I don't even. I, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, I don't even care, dude. Because I've been in enough. Uh, I've been in enough stage plays now where people have fed me bullcrap. Like I'm like I'm okay, you know. Because as a character actor, like usually I just. I just sing in character and be like, oh, you were very good. They don't mean I was good at singing. They just mean I was good at the acting part. But I'll take it all and just internalize it however I want, Llama. So I so I, I assume <laughs> I am a Broadway-ready star. <laughs> oh. I, I only belt like, like so honestly, I sing in that like, like falsetto type, you know, like, oh, I'm just kind of humming along and I'm enjoying it. But like, if it's me privately, Closed doors, nobody's in this in this car. Better believe the volume is cranked, and I am belting it like if I'm on Broadway. Like if I am, <laughs> if I am doing the you know the audition for the movie, that's that's what I'm doing in the car. <laughs> I look silly. I, I know I do, dude. I'm that way with I'm that way with pretty much any musical, like Hamilton. I, oh, I I'm yeah. gonna be a damn good Schuster sister one of these dang days, man, or Skyler <laughs> sister one of these dang days, man. I'm 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 getting that down, but no, I. I'm I'm exact. I'm right there with you. I if somebody if if somebody looks into my YouTube music account, they're gonna wonder. I, I, they're gonna assume I drive a panel van because I have so many <laughs> Disney hit and Disney cover like playlists saved to that thing, and uh, and I'm sure I'm on a watch list. But you know what? I should be. I make sure they tune into the channel. But no, it's a yeah. It's a it's man. I I'm I'm horrible and I, I'm I'm egotistical. Llama, I will roll my window down. I don't care. I'll be in middle of oh. town. I'm rolling my window down. I'm like, Oliver, don't be scared. I don't care, man. I don't care. You know? No, man. It, it, I keep that for myself. But but in the car, I've gotten more confidence with the family. I, I, you, listen, it's it's a, the weirdest thing. I have this. I don't think it's crippling, but it's like, I, I don't know how to describe it. But like, I have this like n- like anxiety. Like when when I'm in church. Right, we're mm-hmm. all singing the same damn thing because we're all reading, and everyone sounds ter- equally terrible. Um, you know, joy to the world or whatever. I will not open my mouth. I will just, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? It, it, because I'm terrified. I'm terrified. But I will sing and act like an idiot on my my reactions <laughs> because it's <laughs> me. It's it's me by myself here doing the reaction. And then when it comes on video, I'm like, you know what? They're not going to see me. And then I, you know, hopefully they don't say anything to me. Um, so I'm like, whatever, let's just put it out there. Let's be, let's get the silliest thing I can get out there. But it, it's, it's a real thing for me. But, uh, but yeah, man, Al- Aladdin is one of those movies, man, that I, I can quote, I can sing. Um, let me ask you this favorite Aladdin song. Ooh. I, I'm, I, I'll, you know, let me, um, I think I have it here. Let me, let me pull up, um, the soundtrack so that I can give you. So there's the intro, which is Arabian nights, right? That's a banger. We got, we got one jump ahead, right? One jump ahead of the bread line. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have your friend like me. I mean, the classic Prince Ali. You have a whole new world. And I think it's just a re repray a refra uh reframe of a whole new world at the end. And then you've got the whole new world, the people, Bryce and Regina Bell. Oh my cover, goodness. Is, Gosh, those were so good. P- people did like oh. two or three of them. Yeah, they did they were Beauty all and the bigger. Beast too, didn't he? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, it, it was man. Beauty and the Beast with, with Celine Dion, right? Didn't he oh. do it with her? Yes, he did. Maybe that's our next one, Beauty and the Beast. Oh man. <laughs> That that boy, you know he's feeling too. He's like, oh, 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 
it's like, gosh, man, I never, I never, I never loved nothing in my life like that man loves that note right there. He just, it, he just oh, belt. he hits it too. He hits it hard, <laughs> man. He hits that one hard. So again, not, not, you know, you don't have to narrow it to the one, but like, what, what would you say were maybe one of these, like, if you, if you had to pick one, what, what would you prefer to hear? Uh, so uh, I would say that most of the time, if I'm in the car, I'm listening to the Aladdin soundtrack. Is usually uh, um, a whole new world. Is is generally the go to because it's easiest to sing. Best song in the film from a musical standpoint is One Jump. It's the best introduction of a character ever. Oh it's yes, perfectly to get us in and uh, and yeah, it, it it makes you feel sympathetic for this guy who basically just robbing people you know what i mean so so i uh i one jump best best musical song but god how can you not say a whole new world yeah i mean you're right about the one jump ahead like because he, he does do a slow reprise where he's like riff rap street rats i don't buy that like like he like brings it back down and you're just like oh <laughs> you know so so for me for me, um, it, it's it's Prince Ali, for the reasons I, I had mentioned before. I think that's one of my favorite songs. Um, it's fun. It's it's energetic. It's the it's the the feels. But if I really, if I really, you know, like what I think encapsulates the movie, I like One Jump Ahead. I, I I sing it every time. But Friend Like Me is the sentimental favorite. Like that's the one where if I hear it, I will I will you know I'll be jamming to it. I, I'll tell you this. Um, and again, this is kind of like therapy. You know, I always tell people my podcast, my channel, it's all like therapy for me because what I've realized is as I get older, and because I have kids, and because you know th that changes your your perspective. Like I, I I never cried at anything um, as a as a youth, right? Like I watched something really really sad. There's one movie, and I'll, I'll tell you one movie in a minute. But um, but other than that, I was like you know just watching. You know, now I can't even I can't even hear a whole new world without tearing up, <laughs> <laughs> which is which is a, a shameful admission on my part. But I hear the the melody and I hear the you know I can show you the world and like the minute he he finished and then she comes in there's a there's a little tear just starting to form and I'm like I can't, I can't do this I'm, I'm <laughs> Dude, it's, kid, they, it's kids they break you bro I have trolls oh too I ugly cry at that movie. <laughs> Every time at the end, every time. Uh, but yeah, whole new world. The Tarzan. Uh, um, oh, oh yes. you'll be in my heart. I can't even hear covers of that. Like I'll put on like a heavy metal version of that song, and I'm still bawling like a baby. I'm like, yeah. goodness gracious. So, so I, th I, I think it's, and that's a, the thing I wanted to ask you because, you know, ha having a, having a little one changes everything. Like. The perspective in which you watch the movie, the the way you see Aladdin and his trajectory, he's he's a again, he's an orphan, he's a street rat, whatever. Like at first, I'm like, this guy's you know, whatever. But like now I'm like, where's his family? Where's his dad? Where, where, where's his mom? Right. When I have kids, that's what I'm thinking about. When I'm watching it as a as a, as a youth, I'm like, all right, he had it rough. <laughs> Yeah. We, we're all street rats. We all had, we had our moments, but but now I'm like, where's his mom? Where's his parents? You know, I got Jasmine. Him. I got does... him beat. I'm a hood rat. Shoot, I got him beat. Uh, he's a street rat. <laughs> right, exactly. <Numbers> up. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like like having kids gives again gives a different perspective on anything. So with this movie in particular, like I said, just those small little moments, like when he gives the bread to the kids in the in the in the alley <laughs> I, I i'm like i've seen that scene a hundred times now poor kids <laughs> no where their parents where, where, where are their parents they're, they're eating bread off of this dude and this monkey wants to eat all the bread <laughs> yeah, i don't even care they don't even care dudes pounding around with them like they, they know there's not a hand sanitizer bottle in sight llama it's just, oh my god these you know these how do these kids survive I don't know how these kids survive. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So then, you you know, then you've got, of course, the plot of this movie, which is a pretty interesting one. And it's, I think, um, tale as old as time, as they say, right? You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the princess who is betrothed or has to be married to another prince. And here's the someone who is deserving but does not meet the title. 
Um, you know, and 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 you meet Jafar, who I think is uh, underrated as a, as a villain. Like like you know, we don't talk about Jafar, but Jafar is an evil man. I was about to curse. I was like, this is the evil motherfucker right here. <laughs> Undo it, man. I can do one, I think, and YouTube will let it go. But but yeah, no, he's Jafar is 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 you know next level baddie, man. Like he's he's up there. Um I mean he's, a, he's an old man trying to get with the teenage girl like the, it's not even <laughs> just like like the weirdness of that like you're watching this like he seems like he's an old man no the her dad even he's like but you're so old it's like <laughs> it's like dude <laughs> like, that like, like breaks the spell like she, he's yeah. like in her deep spell and he's like but you're so <laughs> old and you're like <laughs> like that makes total sense like it makes total sense why you would like do the timeout right there be like <laughs> oh it's so creepy it's so creepy and what, it, i mean it i think one thing that makes jafar jafar work as a foil to aladdin is that they both want the same thing they both whatever yeah. their station in life whether they're a street rat whether they're the royal vizier they believe themselves to be something more than they're what they're perceived as, and they're willing to go to pretty extreme lengths to get it. I mean, let, let I mean, let, if we if we look at the actual logistics of what Aladdin does, Genie oh, yeah. had to create a whole country and 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 make him a prince of it, and then like to be a prince, that means you're not the king, which means somewhere floating out there is prince ali's parents who have no clue that they were wished into existence like he goes to some pretty extreme lengths to get what he wants and uh and and so does jafar so i think that's why they, they work so well together They're actually two peas in a pod going after the same thing you know i never looked at it that way but yeah now that you say uh, where is where is a babwa like where where yeah. is that place like they just made it up in their heads but <laughs> and what's crazy is he had to have messed with everybody's minds to believe it's a real place too because jasmine believes the premise that the prince of a, of a babwa sometimes dresses up like a commoner and goes out amongst the people because when she calls him on <laughs> on being aladdin he's like no that's what i do and she's like Oh yeah, that tracks. That must mean that a babwa is close enough that dude's just going to the market on a Saturday. <laughs> Over under on the number of times we said a babwa. Right? Like, like I didn't think I didn't think that was gonna happen. <laughs> oh, I'm just glad you said it first because I know how it's pronounced. But I also know it's 2022. I'm like I ain't mispronouncing nothing, dude. <laughs> oh, oh man, what you know? I'm gonna what? get a, a you get a you can get a comment. Maya Babwa is not your joke, all right? Don't, don't, don't exactly take my coaching. <laughs> well, so which is a good segue, you know. I and we'll bring this up as as just a point that we saw. So, you know, in rewatching it, uh, Disney Plus has gotten some heat for some of their movies depicting things that are, uh, I guess, no longer acceptable or stereotypical, right? So, before the Aladdin movie, if this is the first time you're watching it on Disney Plus. There's a warning, and I'm gonna just gonna read the warning to you. It says here, this program includes negative depictions and or mistreatment of people or cultures. These stereotypes were wrong then, and they are wrong now. Rather than remove this content, we want to acknowledge its harmful impact and learn from it and spark conversations, to create a more inclusive future together. And then it goes on to say, Disney's committed. Da 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 da. I mean. They changed words in this movie. You know that. I mean, I, oh, there was uh, the opening line was, uh, well, they'll cut off your ear or something like that. You they, know? Yeah, they'll cut off your ear because they don't like your face. Your face, barbaric, yeah. But hey, it's home. And, and then they, yeah. they changed. I don't know what they changed it to, but it was it, it was noticeable, right? Mm -hmm. um, in this cut, in the Disney Plus cut, they did change the Prince Ali song. He... They still says he has slaves, he has servants and flunkies, but they say they they like completely skip a verse somewhere in there. Because I'm I was listening to it, and I'm I'm singing it, and I'm like, oh wait, wait I'm a, I'm ahead of the I'm ahead of the song. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, they had cut something from the from the movie. So uh, yet another um, strong uh, case for physical media. <laughs> but I do that every time I watch Muppet Christmas Carol, bro. Every time I watch Muppet Christmas Carol, they cut that entire scene. Where he's singing the love we found with with uh, Clara, and it's like oh, it's so God. dumb because they cut it, and I love that song. It's one of them crying songs, and oh, yeah. uh, 
And then, but then they reprised it at the end of the show. It's like, but that song wasn't played before. But anyway, I digress. I I get it. I understand what Disney is trying to do. I also understand that if you truly felt that these were negative depictions, Disney, you would take it down because they're still negative depictions, right? Yeah, I right. can't find Song of the South on Disney Plus, right? No, and for good for good reason, anywhere. right? Because yes. Zippity Doodah was a horrible song, I think. No, but but regard no, regardless, they they took that down. They made a line in the sand that that was harmful and and wrong. They're not doing that here. They're like, we want to tell you it's wrong, but we also want to profit the hell out of this. Right. So we're gonna right. keep we, it in. Like this. We it's, know it's you want to so see wrong. this. Yeah. It's so disin. <laughs> it's so disingenuous. Right. Right. Why put it up there if you're not gonna do it? Like like. Uh, it's, it's annoying. It, yeah. And again, I, I get it. Like they did some things that were, I think that, I think some of it is culturally insensitive, but most of it is just stereotypes at that moment in time. Like there was things that, that again, whether it was acceptable or not, it was things that people did at that time that they thought, Oh, that's okay. Like, Oh, like for example, I, I love bringing this up short circuit too. Yeah. I had no idea <laughs> I had no idea that the Pakistani guy was a white guy. And now yeah. that I know who that white guy is, I've seen him in like a hundred different movies. One, I'm yep. impressed by his performance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed the hell out by his performance. And does a damn but, good job. <laughs> right. But, but two, I was like, oh, okay, I get that. <laughs> like I get it now. <laughs> but like back then I had no idea that that guy was, <laughs> but it's the same thing. It's, it's at the moment in time, you don't realize it. And, Look, you can either continue to do that, which no nope, nobody does that now, right? But just no. again, it is it is what it is. Dude, if you uh, you said it best, I think in your Greece, you said this in your Greece review. Like it's hard to judge a film. Yeah, I'm paraphrasing, of course. It's hard to yeah. you can't judge a film by 2022 standards when it was made for an audience that enjoyed it's it's a weird dynamic. Why are we because the audience enjoyed the hell out of it when it came out, right? Like it's very yeah. difficult to now, yes, it's 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 insensitive. It, it's it is, but um, you know, there are some there's some there's some real weird uh stuff if you really want to dive into Aladdin yeah. and you know, you got guys in sheik turbans when there's no sheiks in Baghdad. This is, seems to be set in Persia, yet people aren't dressed Persian appropriate. Everyone's speaking English, except when they say God, they say Allah, which is weird. It's like a weird decision yeah. to, to put in. Like there's a lot of weird things. But I also don't know that anyone grew up malicious because of it. I don't right, think, exactly. I don't think the target audience for this film is internalizing anything about Middle Eastern culture or South or South Asian culture from this film. It's it's almost not the I, I'm trying I'm, I'm to negotiate this politically <laughs> or, or nicely, politically correctly. I don't think kids even realize that it's supposed to be the middle east right there right right th these characters are engrossing this story is engrossing the actual story of aladdin it's a chinese guy so like it's not there it, if you it, it, in the actual arabian night so it's not it is not a um the story itself is almost transcendent it's almost an adaptation of an idea set right. in a fantasy kingdom nobody calls out the witcher and like that is absolutely not the way people dressed in Germany or whatever. You know what I mean? Like nobody yeah, calls exactly. shit out for European stuff, but we're so quick to white knight other cultures. And I'm not saying that that's wrong or right. I'm just saying that I think sometimes we make mountains out of molehills. No, I agree. And, and, and you know what it is? It's like when they take the influence from an area, like I think I've, I've seen that. It, like that, that used to be how they, they would come up with, uh, fantasy islands or fantasy type environments they'd be like all right so it's inspired by malaysian customs it's inspired by you know uh islanders it's in, you know it's inspired by these types of 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 cultures that have these representations but they weren't like this is strictly about you know this group of people like this you know so it it, it again i i think i think here where i think we we're probably talking about it way too much than we need to but it, it, it needs to be said. I mean, it's there mm -hmm. and, and it's understood. It's understood. But I, again, the, 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 um, the way the story was told and the way that they, the, the focus, it, it has everything to do with the moral of having wishes, right. And having yeah. the ability to manipulate things and, and what do you do with that? And like, I never, um, 
you know, I never even thought that until this movie or, or this this uh, story that you could be as powerful as the genie. Like I, I never realized the genie was such a powerful being. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> it was a phenomenal cosmic power, itty bitty living space, right? <laughs> um, so I, that was just a concept that blew my mind as a kid. Like I was like, holy shit, he's right. The genie has the ultimate power. He makes and breaks all these things. Um, but you know, and then, you know, wishing to be a sorcerer, wishing to be a prince and you know, you, then you go in your brain, you're like, what would the three wishes be? Right. What would my yep. three wishes be? And I think my three wishes as a kid versus my three wishes as an adult, way different. <laughs> but at the time as a kid, I was like, yeah, I want to be a prince. Give me all the money. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> Give me all the money. <laughs> um, so, you know, again, uh, Aladdin has has a a journey which is interesting. He goes from nothing to something, right? He he go it's it's the lottery. It, he hits the lottery. He gets this uh, because he's good of heart. He gets this perfect opportunity. He gets everything he ever wanted. He gets the money. He gets the status. He gets the girl. Yep. Um, but he he promised his friend the genie he would release him. And so it's such a it's such a crazy like like moral discussion with you know and again. He gets to the point where life happens and he can't come, he can't bring himself to do it. He's like, I'm going to need you. You you made me, so I can't let you go. And so he becomes exactly what they had feared. And so I, I always found that to be like very interesting, even as a kid. It's like, oh, Aladdin's a piece of shit. Like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you told your friend you would let him free. <laughs> it, well, it's, it's, it, again, it's that, that awesome duality and juxtaposition of Jafar and Aladdin. Jafar legitimately mm. imprisons the Sultan on top of a mountain and puts Jasmine, the person he's trying to woo two seconds later, in an hourglass and traps her in there, similar to how Aladdin is trapping the genie in a circumstance. Like, there's, su there, uh, there's such a uh, there's such a, a richness in, in the right storytelling between those two characters and the way that all plays out. I love it. I yeah. love this idea of all their wishes are just based on I want to be I want to be noticed I want to be seen I want to I want to be I want to be the guy I'm not you know it's it works great for kids because we're we don't want to be you know we're kids our entire life is being told what we can't do you know what I mean right, if, right. and so I need that I I have potential in me I want to see it realized. And to a kid, the only way that's going to happen, at least in your mind, is in a supernatural way. And then you think when I grow up and I get to be that person, then my life will change. And that's like Jafar when he becomes a sorcerer. He thinks he's he's a sultan. He's reached the apex. And then just like we know as adults, nothing changes, dude. I still I still got to sit there and wish, man, I wish I wish I wish Elon Musk just give me a million dollars, just a million, just just for just, you know, he can he can afford it. I wish dude would do, it. you know, like and, and so then we start wishing to be at the sorcerer. Then we have to eventually we, we become a sorcerer and we're not happy with that. Well, then we got to become the all powerful ruler. Like nothing is yeah. ever good enough, no matter how well Jafar or Aladdin sees themselves inside. Like he's a, if only they'd look closer, you're right. still not happy with it. Aladdin. Exactly. Even when they look closer, so I don't know. It's 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 a such a rich story, man. It's such a rich story. Yeah, and it's 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 the again the morality of the wishes. It's 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 keeping your promise. It's you know in Jafar's case, doing whatever it takes to get that power. And that's like you know, again, could be commentary on anything, right? But like that's what happens. The the evilness seeks in that you that you want this power, you want the greed, you want it all. And so at what cost, right? He, he gave he, that one dude, um, Kazim, I think his name is died in the beginning. He got eaten yeah. by the cave of wonders. He said, oh, well, <laughs> he obviously was less than worthy. <laughs> so we're yeah. like, Oh my God. <laughs> oh. But, but yeah, no. And then, you know, and then Jafar, like I said, he goes to the crazy links and, and, and because of his own greed, because of his, you know, his lust for power, gets caught in the trap. Aladdin is enough, you know, is able to, um, to kind of trick him, right? Like, you know, the chess move and get him to, 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 uh, you know, to become a genie himself, which is ridiculous. But um, I, I told, I told Tiff when that happened this time we were watching, I'm like, that's, that's where Jafar loses me because <laughs> I would assume a girl, like as a kid, you don't realize you're like, yes, wish to be the genie. That makes sense. As an adult, you're like, 
why didn't homie just wish to have the powers of the genie? Like, why would you wish to be a genie? Like, you see what a genie is, right? Dude is in front of you and, and cowering before you as you're making wishes. Ask dude you want to be. Come on, Jafar. Come. You know, yeah, it's just, exactly. Uh, yeah. But yeah, those those are that's like an adult. You're like, hmm, let me see. That's where Jafar, again, Jafar is is tricked by Aladdin. He 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 feels it. He's like, oh no, he's more powerful than I am. And he's just like, nah, no one's gonna be more powerful than me. <laughs> so <laughs> oh man. Um so let's talk about the, the two big comedic standouts. You've got Yago um voiced by um Gilbert Godfrey, and then obviously Robin Williams. Uh, as Aladdin, um, I think two perfectly cast voice actors for those roles. Like I like like the annoying parrot in your ear couldn't be more perfect than Gilbert Godfrey's <laughs> <laughs> oh, cackle. <man. laughs> it, it's, um, it, I don't know what came first, chicken or egg, with that. Like they had to. Did they write Iago and then like discover they had to have known they were going to cast Gilbert for that? Like that bird in the 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 dialogue everything about that bird is gilbert god like, oh yeah the even even the animation of his face and like yeah. the, the the mouth it's like but i i honestly think i think um based on seeing some of the um, the youtube footage of robin williams recording sessions um for the movie is they let him rift they let him just kind of you know do his thing and i think with Gilbert Godfrey, you, they probably did the same. They probably had a structure and said, hey, you're going to be pissed that the, this guy's putting crackers in your mouth. Go, go. <laughs> Tell me what you would say to somebody who put crackers. I got to eat those stupid crackers. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> like, you don't write that. You don't write that and hear Gilbert Godfrey. I think you you write the joke and you go, hey, this is what's going to happen. Uh, but you got to let him be him. Oh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, I mean, it's probably my standout character because, like, after the Return of Jafar and in the cartoon show, he's a he's a good guy, right? So, like, he's always been up there as one of my favorites. Yeah, and, and that, again, that's I love that Disney can do that. Sometimes, is they take they take a villain and they change his arc a little bit, and they're like, oh, he's now your sidekick in the new Disney series. Um, I call that the anime ification of a character because it seems like every villain in anime is the guy's best friend for the next for the rest of the show <laughs> like a buddy cop <laughs> yeah but he was no he was i think it was gilbert godfrey was the was was he the original voice in the animated series and in the um in the follow-up movies i think he was right oh yeah yep okay. he, yeah. he stayed with it oh i think you're muted oh Sorry, yeah, he was enjoying. I was saying he was enjoying those Disney paychecks for sure. Dude, have um, you ever watched any documentaries on that dude? That dude was like super cheap, so I'm sure any paycheck was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those were guaranteed. He just goes in the studio, rips a couple of lines, and then he's he's done for the day. Like I am Groot. I want Vin Diesel's. <laughs> I, I want that job, dude. I, that and like Toby Kebbell doing the facial <laughs> performance for king kong and skull island it's like what does that what does that monkey do the entire movie like did he raise his eyebrows like twice and he got paid for that or uh alan tudyk and he plays like every animal oh, in disney yes. movies now just to squawk and and growl or whatever every once in a while that dude's getting paid when he's a droid you know like like not when he's not when he's the droid in rogue one but he's been other droids it's like what did you those are all like just generated bleeps and bloops. You just push some <laughs> buttons on a keyboard. You got paid. Nah, exactly. I made a deal with some sort of devil. I'm telling you. I'm telling no, you. No. I mean, his his K2SO from Rogue One was, oh, I mean, come on, man. That, that guy had me tearing up, man. But uh, but no, you're right. He, Like, wh how do you do that? How do you? And again, that's why I went from, I want to be an actor. I want to be in, on camera. I want to be. Then I was like. You know this voice acting thing. It looks like it can be pretty fun. I'd love to do that, <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, I, I, I'm for for like two two solid years. I was like trying to convince my wife to move to Texas because I was like, dude, that's where all the voice acting jobs are. We got to move to Texas. We're gonna move to Texas. And then my wife would like she'd she'd be okay she'd be okay with it, you know. And then she watched some YouTube videos of cats that live in Texas, and she's like, I can't deal with them accents. I ain't moving to Texas. So that that so. 
So now I'm stuck here in Minnesota, where we absolutely have no accents at all. Boy, you got none. Gosh, Hallie, get, no, none, none, none at all. Um, you betcha. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, dude. Not for I was I really wanted to do it for a little while. I, I got in with some cats on YouTube. There's some if you if you hunt deep enough for Chamorro Cinema on YouTube, you'll find me doing some voiceover work on some random channels. And uh it's 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 not worth checking out. No, <laughs> it might be fun. It might be a fun, uh, a fun watch. Um, all right. So, 1992, this movie comes out. It was the highest grossing film of 1992. It made half a billion dollars, 500 million dollars, over 500 million dollars, and that's not including the VHS sales and DVD sales and after uh, market sales that they had. Um, which I think 1992 was a pretty significant year in terms of movies. I have it here. Oh no, it's not significant. It just had some some memorable movies. Kidding? I mean, class act, bro. Class act, Rob. In 1992. Okay. No. Well, I, I'll, I'll give you the list. So number one was Aladdin, right? So Aladdin was number one in the box office. The Bodyguard was number two. <laughs> that year as i said i thought significant because they were like in my brain 92 was like oh no there's some great movies there are some but this list doesn't really use a good representation um the bodyguard home alone 2 yeah uh was number three basic instinct was number four um lethal weapon three okay 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 uh <laughs> batman batman returns yeah i, I would see that yeah. A Few Good Men, that's a classic. Mm -hmm. Sister Act, Bram Stoker's Dracula. I can't believe that one made $200 million. <laughs> and Wayne's World. <laughs> that's your top 10 for 1992. So, so, so that's the top 10. So I'm, I, think, I think part of what makes 92 feel more significant is the films that came out that nobody liked, but I loved as a kid, like Under Siege, you know, American yeah. Me. <laughs> You know what I mean? South oh Central. my God. American those were all film oh. Dude, those were all amazing films that came out that year when I was a kid that I was all about. But I, don't, I they obviously didn't make they obviously weren't making basic instinct money, darn it. Or Wayne's no. money. Dr. Giggles. I, I, I talk about Dr. Giggles way more than I should. That is a terrible <laughs> movie that I absolutely love. And I'm not ashamed to admit scared the heck out of me when I was like, you know, second grade or whatever when that came out. But that's a that's a gosh now 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 I'm gonna take a deep dive into 1992. Thanks, Lama. Thanks. No, I, I'm actually doing it right now. My cousin Vinny <laughs> uh, came out in '92. Um, let's see, the Lawnmower Man. Remember oh that? Oh my goodness! Heck yeah! The CGI Fest. Uh, that was the Lawnmower <laughs> Man. Um, oh yeah. Let's see. I I can't believe we didn't get that amazing virtual reality with all those green lines everywhere, man. Oh goodness my gracious. god. Come on, like that's that's yeah. what I was looking forward to. Uh, yeah, Beethoven. Come on, man. Beethoven oh, was it released in '92. Fern, well, Fern Gully, Fern, <laughs> three oh, Fern ninjas, Gully. three ninjas. Goodness gracious! Yeah, I mean, these are all Newsies, the Babe. Oh my Newsies God! Was so terrible. But so many no. movies. <laughs> so no, many Newsies. shitty movies in '92. <laughs> oh, Buffy the Dude. Vampire Slayer. Cool world. Oh, goodness go. gracious. <laughs> we can go down that list forever. We should do that next. Like we should do 1992 <laughs> movies, <laughs> and it won't she... even <laughs> won't even be a discussion. We're just gonna be like naming stuff off excitedly. <laughs> Passenger 57, <laughs> dude. <laughs> <laughs> like that was that was that movie. <laughs> oh my Passenger god. 57 and Drop Zone came out. Goodness gracious! Like, oh my god. Yeah, dude. I could go down this for hours. And I you will. know what's funny about movies, right? It's like you know how, like, like I'll, I, I think, I think we're doing it f for each other. Like I'll, I'll mention, uh, uh, you know, a quote from the movie, and you'll be like, "Oh, you'll pick up on it." My oh, wife, yep. it drives her crazy. She's like, "You, you can't remember what I said thirty seconds ago, but you remember a movie from nineteen ninety two, and you can quote it from beginning to end." I'm like, "It's just, it's just, uh, you know, little things trigger the brain. That's all." I try to explain that to her, but she doesn't buy it at all. I just, I just, I, my wife knows I didn't start self medicating till 1996, and that's when all that short term memory went right out the window. Everything before then, though, golden, golden. No, nah, man, it's again, it, it's it's love of movies. Um, 
So again, Aladdin to me, if we were gonna if we were gonna sum it up, it, it's a it's a perennial classic. It's up there. I don't know about the Mount Rushmore of animation, but it's it's up there as as a as a classic. Um, so many memorable moments and lines. Um, so I, I, you know, just, I thoroughly enjoy it. But again, the experiences from a kid to an adult, to having kids, it's still there. It's still the core is for me, the core is still the, the what I feel when I hear the music, what I feel when I see the characters. Um, I don't look in, and that's, that's again, that's how I look at things nowadays is I don't, I don't look at it and go, Oh, look at the CGI. Look how terrible that is. You know, I look at it and just go, wow, I love this movie. I love this character. I love this song. And, um, you know, and I enjoy things more, I think, as an adult than I did as a kid. Um, but as a kid, like I said, I went to see this in the theater. I probably saw it a couple of times. I had it on VHS. I burnt that thing out. I had the CD. So uh, this is one of my favorites for sure. What about you? <laughs> Absolutely. As far as, like you said, Mount Rushmore maybe doesn't quite make that cut, although it is hard. It is hard to cut out Disney movies, you know. I mean, there, oh, yeah. there's a there's a few there's a few that that I don't I don't revisit that well too much, you know. I mean, most of them rhyme with 101 Malmations, but the rest <laughs> of uh, the rest that you know. But for the most part, Disney films is it's something just about that era. There's something just about that entire that entire segment of my life, you know, that I that 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 it's hard to differentiate one from the other. And uh, and Aladdin just brings me there, dude. And it's it's there's something magical about the way that these musicals, like uh, like we talked about earlier, were made. And mm-hmm. because of that, the songs stick out. The 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 visuals stick out. Everything is so married together, and it becomes this entire feast when you when you watch it. And they hold up so much better. Like I can sit down and watch Aladdin, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast right now. No, no questions asked. I'll just sit down and I'll put them on. I can't do that with the live action remakes. You know what I mean? And I, or, no. or, or a lot of, a lot of animation that comes out nowadays. So, so there, there has to be, there is lightning in that bottle. Cause I think that there's just far too many people with that same story. So yeah. I, you know, it's just, it's, it's a darn good film. Mama. It's a darn good film. It is. It is now. Before we before we adjourn, I did want to bring up. Did you ever play the Aladdin Sega Genesis game? I did. I did. Um, How hard I was is that a game? dude, <laughs> dude, and I'm a I'm a Sega kid. I used to get so mad when when because those games would release on SNES too, and they'd be different, and I'd yeah. be mad. I'd be mad because because Aladdin is one. That is that is better on the Genesis, in my opinion, than the SNES. But there are other ones like Lion King that are not. So in my so so this one was a win for me. So I always like to tout that. Like I've got the good Aladdin game. You got the crappy one. Yeah. Uh but dude, Aladdin, Aladdin so hard. All them all them games. All the Disney hard. ones were difficult. Like Lion King by far. I think I rage quit that one like a hundred times. <laughs> I'm telling you. I think it's movie, uh, movie and TV games in general. You ever played Darkwing Duck? Oh yes, yeah. That, I can't get past that first level. Yeah, go DuckTales. down that. It's just go down. Oh, Duck to, uh, Duck, DuckTales, DuckTales is tough. Was next level. Oh my god. I mean, Chip, I have Chip the I have the remake. I have the re the remastered PlayStation version of um, I think it was PlayStation Three when they re. When I have that one. But just because I love that game, but yeah, no, those Disney so games were good. difficult. They, they were didn't, difficult. They just wanted you to. They just wanted to make sure that you played it enough that you, you know, that that you could. All, I don't think they ever got past like level three. They're just like we don't. We'll we'll say there's eight. We'll say there's eight playable worlds, but there's, a, there's only three. No one's ever getting past this. But like Top Gun, you ever play Top Gun on the on the NES? No, no, <laughs> no. I don't think anyone has ever landed that plane in the very first level. I don't think oh it's possible. I don't think it's ever happened. It, and anyway, yes, movie licensed <laughs> video games, crazy. In fact, uh, not not to plug anything, but Marvin Wynn, if you ever look him up on YouTube, he's a comic book writer. Uh, he he has a YouTube channel where he he like obsessively plays like Rambo and Top Gun oh. and all those whole movie licensed games. Such a fun watch. 
Uh, so yeah, oh, I'm gonna have to check it. him out for sure. Yeah, no, that's you know, I, I I think we could we could probably do a whole podcast of the movie license games. The number one on my list, the Karate Kid, the single worst hardest game I've ever played <laughs> in my life. Like like that Jason the 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 Jason the NES Jason game. What was the point of that game? All I did was go to cabins and die. Like like I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> just just uh, I guess oh, I lost man. again. I guess I lost <laughs> again. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, man. It's been uh, it's been an awesome podcast just to kind of sit down and talk with you a little bit about Aladdin. Um, you know, it just again I I like. I like sharing this space with other people who who love movies or love animation or love whatever the topic is. That's why I don't normally do this podcast by myself. I, I always bring somebody on because I get I get enjoyment and fulfillment in sharing my thoughts on it, but hearing yours and hearing my my go, my guests, you know, kind of tell me what they love. And it's the same things that I love, right? So it's just so much fun to do this podcast. So um, do you have any parting shots before we conclude our Aladdin recap, our Aladdin discussion? <laughs> well, uh, so we're, do, we're doing parting shots. All right. <laughs> no, it's a uh, dude. I, uh, I I gotta say thank you so much for having me on. This has been a long time coming. Um, I've been a huge fan of yours. So uh, so thank you so much for having me on. And again, dude, just to talk with somebody who loves movies, I. There, I think every I think every YouTube channel eventually comes to movies because it's something that unites us so much. You know what I mean? Like, and uh, and thank you for, for going, dude. Thank you, thank you so much for these first time watches. Like, I forget what it's like to first time watch something, but dude, when I see your first time watch it, it it takes me back. It takes me back, and it's it's just so much fun to see the enjoyment on your face, bro. So thank you again for all the amazing content. Thank you, man. Thank you, and and again. Uh, if you guys don't know, like you know, I, I we I met Manny online. We we met uh, just through through you know similar channels that we were watching, and it, it just uh, you, you build community, you build friends, and everything. So, uh, thank thank you so much for coming on for the Be Kind Rewind podcast. I, I loved having you as a as a guest. Uh, I invite you back whenever you'd like for another another round of another movie or another uh, you know topic, whatever you'd like. So uh, let's coordinate and make that happen. Hopefully soon. Um, well, guys, listen. I, I want to thank uh, my co-host, here, Island Boy Manny, for for coming in and 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 sharing Aladdin with you. I hope you guys enjoyed Aladdin. Remember, this is the Be Kind Rewind podcast. If you would like to support my main channel, go to YouTube, The Big Llama Show. Uh, subscribe to that channel. That's how you support the channel. If you're listening to this on podcast, give it a five star rating, give it a high rating, and make sure you subscribe so you know when we drop new content. The Be Kind Rewind podcast is sort of. Um, uh, every other week kind of thing. We try to do as many as we can. Uh, it is difficult to round up guests, so that's the only reason that there's no you know consistent shows for you guys. But again, uh, look at the back catalog. We've done The Departed. We've done The Godfather. We've done um, Ready Player One. We've done The Fast and the Furious, Tokyo Drift. Uh, we've done Grease. So we've done classics on the channel, and so we're going to continue to do that. So just like Aladdin right here. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. This is the Be Kind Rewind Podcast. I'm the Big Llama. He is Island Boy Manny. Thank you so much for joining us. And, guys, remember, Be Kind Rewind. It's movie night. We're going to see you guys all in the next one. Uh, first off, I don't care what you people say. Never follow rules. I'm a trendsetter anyway. Okay, I march to the beat of my own drum. They say I need rules in my life. Well, I got some. That's one. Kill the competition. Two. Be a loyal dog. Three. And if they snitching on your man, send him to the mall. Four. When you party, go hard till you hit the floor. Five. If you didn't see me do it, what the hell you asking for? Welcome to my world. S-I-N-N.